So what are the features we need to consider when declaring a patient brain dead? So before declaring the patient brain dead, we have to make sure that there are no confounding factors. Next, so what are the features we need to consider when declaring a patient brain dead? So before declaring the patient brain dead, we have to make sure that there are no confounding factors. There are no confounding factors. So what are the confounders for brain death? Is one is a hypothermia. Okay, so we have to make sure that the body temperature is at least above the about 36 degrees Celsius. Next is there should not be any sedative drug effect. Okay, sedative drug effect. If patient was on benzodiazepines, then we have to wait at least five half lives of benzodiazepines before confirming the patient as brain dead. Okay, and paralytic drug effect also should not be present. Sometimes when we put the patient on ventilator, we tend to relax the use the muscle relaxants to relax uh, the patient's muscle so that. Uh, they do not fight the ventilator so that particular part has to be taken into consideration so paralytic drug effect should not be present and patients BP should be more than 100 if required vasopressor can be used next is the arterial pH should be normal and PaCO2 in the ABG should be 35 to 45 okay 35 to 45 how can it be done is basically we can set we can uh, manage it with the ventilator settings okay next is hypoxemia uh, should not be present uh, we have to make sure that the in abg the po2 is more than 200 more than 200 millimeter of mercury for this we can do it with pre-oxygenating the patient with fio2 of one FiO2 of one in the ventilator okay in the ventilator so we have to make sure no confounders are present and then go ahead and plan for diagnosing the patient brain dead okay so these are the prerequisites which we just discussed there should not be hypothermia there should not be sedative drug effect or paralytic drug effect the BP has to be more than 100 the ABG should show a PSCO2 of around 35 to 45 which is normal and there should not be hypoxemia okay and then we examine the patient's brainstem reflexes and say that the brainstem reflexes are absent like dolci response light response even caloric test can be done to say that the, there is no brainstem reflexes indicating that the brainstem is not functioning we can do a gag reflex also to say that the brainstem is particularly medulla is not functioning and then no motor movement is present and then we finally before concluding we have to do the most important test the apnea test to, the, to conclude that the patient is brain dead okay to conclude that the patient is brain dead this particular apnea test can come as a question let's see how to do a apnea test so these are the reflexes which we have to do before confirming that patient is brain dead okay so uh, i've just told this is a caloric test the pupillary response or light reflex okay and then this is the corneal reflex there's a gag reflex which we do usually and then we have to do the apnea test in apnea test we have to make sure that uh, there is no confounder there's a first prerequisite we have to fulfill next what we do in apnea test is that we have to have a baseline abg that is the most important part there should be a baseline arterial blood gas analysis where the pacao2 is between 35 to 45 once the ABG is obtained, then we disconnect the patient from the ventilator. Disconnect the patient from the ventilator and then we supply the oxygen through the tube and the tube is placed in the carina. Okay, in the carina. And this is given for around 8 to 10 minutes. During these 8 to 10 minutes, we look for any amount of breathing effort and also we look for any motor response. Okay, we look for any motor response. After 8 to 10 minutes, if there is no breathing response if there is no just uh, movement or if there is no mo motor movement then we continue the test and at around 10 minutes we draw another abg we draw another arterial blood gas analysis so what do we find in this arterial blood gas analysis if the patient is 
brain dead or we say that apnea test is positive when there is a rise in PaCO2 of, of up to 20 from the baseline ABG which we did or if PaCO2 is more than 60 millimeters of mercury then we also say that the patient's apnea test is positive patient's apnea test is positive then we connect back the patient onto the ventilator and discuss with the patient's relatives regarding the feasibility of organ donation feasibility of organ donation this is how the apnea test is done okay and uh, how do we other than apnea test which is a clinical test how do we confirm the patient is brain dead we can do an EEG and in EEG we see something called as electrocerebral silence we can do an MRI also specifically MR perfusion can be done to look at the brain activity we see that there is no brain activity also activity at all the perfusion images will appear completely dull in there won't be any perfusion there won't be any signal coming out in the perfusion studies okay in a brain dead patient so this is the EEG EEG of a normal patient here where we see good alpha and beta waves okay this is a patient with brain who is brain dead here we see it is we can see some amount of pi some amount of deflections here but these are all rhythmically present so they are most likely EKG or ECG artifacts if you remove the artifacts then we see a plain flat line okay this is called as electrocerebral silence electrocerebral silence okay next when we do MR perfusion we see that there is no perfusion at all in the brain this particular pictures are basically in internal carotid arteries which are seen as a bright signal okay and these two images these two pictures or these two arrows are basically the perfusion from the external carotid artery but brain per se will not show any amount of perfusion will not show any amount of perfusion which also suggests that the patient is brain dead next is a patient with coma can go on to become brain dead or they can recover and become conscious if not then they can be either in persistent vegetative state depending on the cause of the coma we can divide persistent vegetative state into two if the trauma is the cause for coma then if the patient is in a vegetative state for more than one month then we consider it as persistent vegetative state if the trauma is not the cause and patient is in coma for some other uh, uh, because of some other reason then we take a duration of up to three months to three months before declaring the patient as persistent vegetative state so if the patient becomes conscious he can be in minimal conscious state or they can have good recovery okay if not they can be left with some disability okay some disability so what are the treatment options available for patients who are in coma so that recovery can occur some of them are amantidine methylphenidate and sindopa can be tried for improving the consciousness level of patients who are in coma